field just driving one unit around. It did okay. We were pretty happy with it for a little while, but it didn't kind of take off the way we wanted. Um, and then really for um, Renegade, I really loved Renegade. I had a great time with it. In fact, in fact, I wish we had started with the multiplayer version of Renegade because we started as following in the paths of all the other first-person shooters, and it wasn't until we got to where we had the full game engine running and we had all the multiplayer stuff running that we finally built the multiplayer mode. And when we built it, we were like, oh my god. That's what that game should have been, right? Because the base fighting and running in and out, all that stuff was just phenomenal. We started putting in the pit system. We started really going back and leaning back into CMC. Um, but unfortunately, we just had scheduled to ship it. We had to ship it. Uh, there were some bugs in the multiplayer stuff that really caused a lot of flaggy and jumpiness. And so, sadly, it didn't, uh, didn't get a chance to be a sequel. But interesting story about that, there was this producer that was working for us at the time under Dan Cermak. His name was uh, Sean Decker. He didn't get a chance to make it today. But Sean Decker and uh, Dan and myself and a bunch of other people worked on this great pitch that we had for Renegade 2 called Battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Sean is the, uh, GM, was the GM of DICE who created Battlefield, by the way. After leaving EA, he went to DICE, created Battlefield, EA bought DICE. So, uh, <laughs> turns out that was a pretty good idea. Um, not my idea, those guys' idea, they did a phenomenal job. I'm really happy to see if it became a game. This is what Renegade looked like at the time, really super kick ass, honestly. I mean, this was like way ahead of its time. It was using light maps, um, it used all sorts of different kinds of stuff, pre, pre rendered, um, it had an inclusion in the light maps and had an inclusion, all sorts of cool stuff that uh, to this day we still see games coming out now that, um, and not to brag, it's not really brag, it's just the truth that. Games that come out now, like uh, Blade Runner used deferred lighting to do all this lighting, and nowadays that's like the hottest thing in the world. It's just bizarre how these ideas from a decade ago are still relevant today. <coughs> Certainly a lot better now because you can do it in a, in a shader, so you don't have to do it all as you're in the I digress. So, um, now we're on Red Alert 2 and Generals. This is uh, when this big thing, this was Mark Skaggs, comes in and goes, you know, the problem with Tiberian Sun, we're going to put it in Red Alert 2, build a game out of the problem with Tiberian Sun was all this cool stuff that you did was just too subtle. So uh, there was nothing subtle about Red Alert 2. When your unit upgraded, it upgraded in a big way. It was twice as good a plus as the previous version. That really made it work. Um, put a lot more color into it. When the art direction went to the uh, Westwood Pacific office. So it really got to a very different look and feel. All the folks down in Pacific did a wonderful job uh, loving the Red War II franchise. Yuri's Revenge, people ask me all the time, what was your favorite Command & Conquer game? Um, Yuri's Revenge with CNC, with what Red War II was my favorite Command & Conquer game to play because of the three sides and because they were so well balanced. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that was my favorite storyline. I really love the Tiberian storyline. I thought the Tiberian storyline was a better storyline in my opinion, but I love the gameplay of Red War II. So that's my, that's my official word. Um, it's been that way for a while and uh, so far nobody's, nobody's on me yet. Um, Generals, the guys after doing Red War II, they really wanted to branch out into their own story in the Command & Conquer universe. Uh, and they went off and did the general series. Um, the whole point there was really focused on, of course, the strategy element of the play. Um, this is, of course, Red Alert 2. You see the color and the visuals. And so I obviously see how they pulled out the color in Red Alert 2. Really fun. Still Red Alert 2. Oh, yeah. Those are, oh, Red Alert 2. Another great story. Ah. Okay. The original box on Red Alert 2, sadly and tragically, was created in, now it was created in, uh, June of 2001, the cover of the box had the Twin Towers and planes flying into the city crashing. <laughs> We're just about to ship the game, ship game ships in October, September comes along, pulled all the boxes back, it cost EA a fortune, had to pull it all back, destroyed all the boxes, I have a couple of them because I kept them for posterity, but um, at the end of the day, they destroyed all of those boxes because it was in such poor taste. Now, of course, we had no idea. I'm glad we had shipped the game a month before because I'm sure that sitting on the shelves, people would have felt it was in poor taste. It was completely an accident, but obviously, once again, somewhat prophetic about our, our ability to predict the future. You still had that. a mission inside where you had some towers in and the Russian planes, I believe? Yeah, we didn't, have time, we didn't have time to change the, yeah, exactly. We didn't have time to change all the video, otherwise we would have, but yeah, it was one of those. And of course, the, the one of my favorite scenes when you could cut the, the uh, aircraft carrier in half with the iron cannon. And when I talked about making it big, boy, did they ever do that in generals. If I don't know if you guys remember the first time you saw the nuke go off in generals. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, really, really took the breath, your breath away. A phenomenal thing. 
Um, obviously, there's the straking runs, the ability to move the camera around a lot better, some really fun stuff in general. And always, and I've, I've kind of skipped over a lot of this, but always the storytelling element. Even in general, there were storytelling within the game engine, but all of the other CNCs have these wonderful um, pre render sequences that tell the story. And we've always said that if we could ever make somebody look so believable that you believe they were, if we could do Benjamin Button, we'd be happy to do it all in engine. But every time we try to get real performances out of characters from, from everything from Renegade to uh, CNC, we always got that uncanny valley. And so that's why we always start with. Um, Doing, our pre, you know, doing things that we couldn't afford to film, we do it in CG. And whenever we got to people, um, it's a little hard to make CG characters look as good as real women. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> moving right along. Uh, finally, of course, CNC 3 and Red Alert 3, CNC enters a whole new age, a huge reinvestment into the engine, um, return to the proven features of the game, fast and furious gameplay, and our uh, back to the cinematic storytelling away from the general stuff. Came, of course, comes back. Phenomenal. Loved it. You know what? That's the other thing is we actually took Joe Cook and we stuck him in a cooler. We froze him for the years in between because he didn't age a day. Right? <laughs> <laughs> People ask me that all the time. They're like, is that the same actor? I'm like, yeah, oddly. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, CNC3, obviously, you guys don't You guys have played these recently, so you know what they look like. But I think it's really neat to see these when you think about how far this genre has come, how far this game has come, and how far the gameplay has come visually. Um, it's just really, really stunning to see uh, all the things that have come out. Really love the stuff they did with the stylized stuff with Uprising, the anime. Um, Red Alert 3, obviously. Pictures you guys have seen. I'm not going to get into it again. That's a little bit more recent history, so and I'm probably way out of time. Uh, yes. So, um, let's see, I think. That might be, oh yes, the girls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, said, he said it was going to be a hit and it was. <laughs> <laughs> there's a side story there, a new side story. My 18 year old son, Tony, right here. He wants to be a game maker. I tried to tell him I'm talking about it anyone here. He was going to college and everything, and so we had, the, we had this particular slide. I go, I go, I'm putting the girls in there. I go, it's a crowd pleaser. And he goes, really? And I go, really? So I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then of course, uh, Full, uh, full, uh, you know, full name actors and stuff. So finally, I guess my conclusion is um, thank you. Thank all of you. Thank all of the fans. It's been a wonderful 15 plus years in my life making games. It's been a heck of a lot of fun being involved with the CNC franchise from the beginning. Um, obviously not as much so now I'm not part of EA, but these guys keep me in the loop, which is really nice of them, and I really appreciate it. So thank you to all the folks at EA for inviting me to talk to you. I'm going to be around tonight. I'll be on the barge. Uh, come on up, ask me any question. If there's something you'd like to know about the history, uh, provided I haven't drank too much by the time I might remember it, <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. And um, thanks for your time. I appreciate it.